We're excited about our new opponent playing the uh, cadets, and we know that we have our hands full. Anytime you're playing the academy, you're playing some of the best men that we have to offer. The Orange Zone, sponsored by Billy Whitaker Cars and Trucks. What's up? What's up? Welcome in. Hello from the Sky Cam. I'm Tommy Sladek. We have James Mungro. We have Ashley Wenskowski. And we have Brendan Hodges on the producer mic. Syracuse football is 3-0. and This is the award-winning Orange Zone podcast. A reminder, you can find every episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you want to listen. You can also find every episode on our brand new specific Orange Zone YouTube page. So thank you to everyone that subscribed. We saw some nice increased numbers in our Purdue preview, so we appreciate it. And welcome back in. New episodes are released every Wednesday. We invite you to like, comment, subscribe. We'll be putting in, asking you what your predictions are for the game. So make sure you're uh, tuning in everywhere for all this Orange Zone content. Samantha out sick. Ashley is in. And again, this is a Syracuse football team that's 3-0. and So I'm going to open up to my friends over here and just get the vibe of how they're feeling right now. I mean, we have a lot to smile about. Syracuse football being 3-0. I know you and Sam were down in West Lafayette, and that was a great experience for you guys. But, yeah, all around good vibes around Syracuse football. We are balling. <laughs> that was good. That was like a good that, singing. Yeah, yeah. You you give Sam a lot of heat for her rapping, but that was <laughs> actually are balling. pretty good. Syracuse is balling. 3-0. What do you say after that? Let's be 4 0. You're someone that is you're you you will critique a team. Yes. But your vibes are good right now. I, I feel good. And I, I, feel and I good. want listeners I, I, I to understand good. that. I feel, I feel good. He's smiling, there's, he's feeling there's, good. There's some things I gotta critique, obviously, <laughs> but we're heading on the right path. And that's uh Dion has the guys on the right path and the guys are believing in themselves. They went into a hostile environment, came out with a W. Uh things didn't look good in the very beginning, but they kept together and they couldn't stop Schrader. And it's important for game <laughs> predictions from last week. I got to give James his flowers here because do you remember your prediction? It was 35 <clears throat> 17. You came three points off yeah. of Ooh, nailing us on the money. Close. Yes. I was 35 14, so I feel pretty good too. Yeah, you but copied, you're higher you copied, than me. You copied, you copied me I, <laughs> well, was it reverse? Was I actually closer? No. I was. I was 35-14. Regardless, he went first. And so if you listen back, it does seem like I used his prediction right, as what I would say. But it's true. It's how I was feeling. <laughs> End of the day. Thought. End of the day, it was a few W's. So I'm feeling good about that. But again, Syracuse taking down Purdue 35-20. to Hostile environment. That place ruled. I'll say that. Ross Aid Stadium, Big Ten environment, 61,000 strong. It was the type of place where as soon as the game started, you said to yourself – if Purdue gets some momentum here, it doesn't matter who is the away team, you could fall back exactly because of how this went. And so for Syracuse to come out there and be the ones to slap them around to start, I thought that was massive. From the television perspective, from the broadcast perspective, what was the biggest thing that jumped out to you? Well, I think there's been a lot of talk about how maybe Purdue isn't as big of a challenge this year. You know, they're in a little bit of a rebuilding year. But I think my perspective on watching the game, anytime mm -hmm. you go into somebody's house in mm -hmm. prime time on the road and you give it to them like that, that says something about your team. I would 100% agree with that. Um, Syracuse won in there, uh, very hostile environment. Uh, we haven't seen them play on the road yet, and they did exactly what I thought they would do. Uh, uh, you know, some sloppy play, but you're going to have that in football. And, and able to overcome the sloppy play, they did it. And uh, what Purdue couldn't do is one thing, stop the quarterback. They could not stop Schrader. Schrader did some amazing things out there. And there's some things he needs to work on, too. Um, but for the most part, he played a hell of a game. Four rushing touchdowns, 195 yards. Could have been well over 200 if he didn't decide Oops. to take the most casual jog <laughs> on a uh, RPO fake Dino Baber said on Monday, we like to consider ourselves the faking capital of the world here at Syracuse, <laughs> New York, because it happened twice. I've never seen a defense bite so hard, and it's a credit to you know, everyone on that offense. LaQuinn Allen partially for just getting destroyed because of how convincing it was that he had the ball, and then just for, for Schrader to pull away like that, that stuck out. Well, you know something, the technique that Schrader did, the ball handling, that is special detail. That's not just go out there, run around, complete outside. That is detail, detail football. He held the ball correctly, the proper timing, holding the ball just long enough the defense thinks that the running back has the ball. And then when we're out the outside, there was nobody there. You know, unfortunately, I've seen the same type of play like, like, like that happen with Peyton Manning mm -hmm. against the Patriots. 
did not turn out that way. <laughs> I forget the, um, uh, the, the line, but the, the safety smacked him. But I was going to say you're exposed to get lit up in those situations. Smacked him, and he was four yards uh, from the goal line. Right. Uh, Schrader, that was excellent ball handling by everybody up front. Offensive linemen, plus the running backs. That's a big part. I mean, they sucked everybody in there. That's the easiest player you'll ever score on. <laughs> As we, in, in looking ahead to Army, though, it is one of those things where – that can't be the solution, right? That can't no. be the long term long term <laughs> success plan. We know it's possible, but for the sake of his body, you can't let that continue. He said in uh in the player availability today, he goes, Look, like, yeah, he's like, I I I can't really be doing that based on how I'm feeling right now. You can imagine he's yes. he's very sore. And again, this is a um, you know, looking ahead to Army, one of the things that immediately needs to be addressed. And Dino Babers, when answering concerns about it, had literally one word answer on what would you like to see improve? And it was catching the football because yeah. we saw drops. Yeah, we did. I think Schrader, I mean, I don't know about all the fans at home, but I was holding my breath a little bit in that fourth quarter when he just kept taking hit after hit. I was like, oh, no, please, no, like, don't get hurt. So he can't be doing that. He knows he can't be doing that. Dino knows he can't be doing that. And, yeah, they just need to catch the ball. I mean, Schrader said that himself post game. How did you guys – sorry, go ahead, James. So, so, I mean, when you look at the score, okay, the score should be a lot higher. If they caught yeah. the ball, oh, I mean, probably thirty-five-seven realistically at halftime. Yeah, yeah. Half I mean, there's, Hazard there's, had one that was very much there. I mean, we missed the field goal, mm -hmm. um, and we probably we missed that easy touchdown in the end zone that went right through his hands. Uh, so there's a lot of more meat on the bone that they could have, you know, uh, they could have scored off of. Um, I would say there's probably another seven, 17 points out there they should have had. You know, at least fourteen more points, um, and that's just catching the ball. So the tools are all there. Now they've got to catch the ball. And, you know, it, you know with, uh, with Gadsden not being there, other guys are stepping up. And, you know, the, I think it was number 12 that had, had a problem catching. Um, uh, 17, Yamari Hatcher. Okay, yeah, 17. Uh, and he'll get better. Mm -hmm. I mean, because now he realizes that he's going to be a, a major part of this offense and he's getting his opportunity. So he'll get better. But, again, you know, Schrader did a, a great job of throwing the ball. Um, you know, when we talk about him taking these hits, though, uh, got a couple of things that really ticked me off at the end of the half unnecessarily. I mean, that was this that was this dumb football at the very end of the half to have him take one more hit that is he's upside down, laying on the ground. Like you said, we're holding our breath, and it's like, okay, we're, everything is going smooth. Why get him hurt on the last play that uh, potentially all you do is take a knee, you know, and, and go in the locker room, not have your quarterback take another hit. Um Schrader, you know, people are talking about, well, you know, you have a quarterback running. And you don't want your quarterback running, but when you have somebody down uh, like Gadsden, you got to do what you got to do. He's a football player out there. His football instance comes into play when he has the ball in his hands. And he'll make a de good decisions. And, you know, what I think the best uh, from last year is normally he would make mm, three to four bad, bad decisions with the ball. Now he's, you know, he, he's getting better. He's mm -hmm. making maybe two to three bad decisions during the game. Um, but he's, he's looking good and offense is looking good. Again, it's one of those where I don't think the catches and the issues with catches is going to continue, especially being in the dome and the environment, lighting, yeah. whatever it is. I think that's just a fluke game. I don't think it's something that's going to continue because, again, there's there's weapons here, and you have to be happy if you're Syracuse and Garrett Trader to know that you have those with Aronde Gadsden being out. So if you didn't see, he had an um, injury to his midfoot, Ended up getting surgery down in North Carolina. He put out on Twitter Tuesday that it was a success, but he's done for the year. It's a it's a huge disappointment, but They're also terrible. we've seen in the game against Western Michigan, we've seen against Purdue that this is an offense that can still get it done and, as we can see, clearly put up a lot of points. Yeah, they have that crop of young wide receivers, Damian Alford, Imari Hatcher, mm -hmm. like we mentioned, but it's just a matter of whether like they have no choice now but to grow up, like, but to be able to be major parts of that offense because Garrett just can't do it himself every game. Not only injury-wise, but, like, opposing defenses are going to figure that out. You know what I mean? They can't be the one-trick pony that sometimes they were last year uh, when Sean Tucker was hurt. I completely agree with that. The one-trick pony. I like that. They one were, they were no. a one-trick pony last year sometimes, yeah. and they can't do that again. And let's go into this Army game, shall we? Because let's, let's give fans an idea of what we're expecting from these Black Knights. Army coming to the Dome. It's a noon start. You'll be able to watch on the ACC Network if you're not heading there. Um, cadets are led by 10th-year head coach Jeff Monken, who recently signed a contract extension. So he's been there for a while, and they clearly like the way that he's been able to go up um, you know, and, and put, put together these season. The second winning is coach in Army history has a 3-15 record against Power 5 opponents. Quick note, it will be 
ODSU's Military Appreciation Weekend, and um, so there'll be a lot going on with that, especially with Ben Schwartzwalder um, will be honored and part of that Ring of Honor ceremony. Now, I do have a little thing that I noticed, and if you guys have gone on ESPN, you will see the FPI. Or football power index, which really is a breakdown looking at a team's resume, looking at who they've played, what's left. And you may be an analytics person, you may not. But I think what we have here is important to talk about because Syracuse is pretty high up on it. Syracuse is 16th in this ranking metric. And their projected win loss at this point is 9.6 to 2.7. So averaging around a nine and three season, winning out 2.5%, six wins percentage. ESPN has them at 99.7. If we go down the list to where Army is at this point, they are 86 on this power football index. Two and one overall. A type of team where I thought they would be maybe a little bit better than what we've seen so far because they have wins over Delaware State. They have a loss to, is it UL Monroe, Brendan? Yeah, that's correct, yes. UL. Yeah, and then a win slightly over University of Texas or UTSA um, where it was a, a good win but also a close win. And we'll be getting to our breakdowns, but I think this is absolutely a winnable game for Syracuse. But again, we've been doing our reading about Army, but we wanted to get a little bit closer to the action. And Ashley, you were able to catch up with someone that knows this program very well. I think about as well as you can know it. Yeah, I caught up with play-by-play guy Rich DeMarco yesterday, and he gave me some great insight about Army. Here it is. Welcome into the Orange Zone podcast, everyone. I'm Ashley Winskowski here with Rich DeMarco this week, voice of the Army Black Knights, play-by-play voice of the Black Knights. Rich, it's great to have you with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Looking forward to the game on Saturday. Aren't we all? Well, to start off, I want to talk a little bit about the Black Knights with you. Now, your takeaways from them, they are 2-1 and one to start the season, a loss in week one, and then they've kind of rebounded since. What are your big takeaways from this team early on? Well, it's interesting. After the game on Friday night against UTSA, and we were talking on the post-game show, and I said, you know what's so interesting? Army's a team which really would have benefited if college football had an exhibition week, a preseason week, because there was so much talk in the offseason about a new offense, implementing it, linemen gaining weight, running backs losing weight, more being asked of a quarterback. Week one against Louisiana Monroe, a lot went wrong for this Army offense. And I think it gave a lot of folks maybe a skewed view of how this offense was going to be for Army this year. Of course, the 57 nothing win over Delaware State. You consider, you know, the, com- the competition, right? That's a team out of the championship subdivision. But it was great for that team to get on the field and have some success, run some things that worked against any kind of opposing team. And then I think you saw the manifestation of all that Friday night at UTSA, and you saw what the quarterback can do, uh, running the ball, throwing the ball. Uh, The Army defense played very well uh, as well. Army withstood the Hail Mary at the end of the first half, 37 points on the road at UTSA. That's a really good team, a team which could win the American Athletic Conference. So my takeaway is this team has gotten better each week, and I think what we saw, especially offensively against UTSA, is – how the offense will be in sync, hopefully, the remainder of this year. Is there anything that specifically impressed you, especially the last two weeks as they've kind of rebounded? Bryson Daly, the quarterback, and I think it's one word, it's confidence. You could see him, again, like this Army offense, improving each and every week. And a lot being asked, running, passing, whether it's reads on on a mesh on a, on a handoff out of the shotgun, knowing when to pitch, if he's running to the right or left or throwing the ball down the field. I think you can really look at the improvement of Bryson Daly from each of these weeks. Accounted for five touchdowns against Delaware State. Had another just big game against UTSA. And with that, where do you think Army fans should kind of hold their expectations for this season, for this team? Well, it's, it's interesting, uh, Ashley, because this – Game against UTSA was the beginning of what really everyone associated with the team looked at as a critical five-game stretch. The road game at UTSA, road game at Syracuse, bye week, then home Boston College, home Troy, which was a conference champion last year, and then at LSU. So those five games were going to be the games which really told the tale we felt of the season. So when you kind of rank those games, uh, they're all going to be tough. So I, I just think if Army can win, you know, keep the momentum going and hopefully, you know, play well at Syracuse, come up with a win. I think that could really 
you know, turn this season from, hey, you know, this could be a bowl team if a couple things break to, you know, being a team that could be on the road to, to eight, nine wins like we've seen in years past. Now, on that note, as you just mentioned, Syracuse is one of the larger teams on Army's schedule this season. How is it for an opposing team to walk into the Dome and have to play in that atmosphere? Well, I think it's something that, you know, a lot of uh, the Army players from the state of New York have either uh, thought about, maybe played at in a high school championship game. And, and you just think about the history of Syracuse football in the state of New York. Now, one thing about Army is they recruit nationally, so it's not like it's a regional Right. A regional team. But, you know, there's history between Army and Syracuse going back to obviously, you know, 50 years ago. Then, of course, the 1980s. And a lot of folks remember the 1996 game, which was the last time Army and Syracuse met. Army came in nationally ranked and that was Army's only regular season loss to Donovan McNabb in the Orange. So uh, there's a lot of memories of that. A lot of the uh, Army football players, the graduates from the uh, 80s and 90s talk about playing Syracuse. So I think it'll be great for the young players on this team to get reacquainted with this rivalry in upstate New York. So you do feel like it is a bit of an in-state rivalry because I've heard people say that. I don't know how the folks over at Army feel about that. Well, I think it's just a, it's a regional team which uh, has has a great following, right? So, you know, I just look at it where, hey, it's a bus ride. It's not like you got to get on a flight and, and you know, right. go far away. It's I think it's a good game. It's a great game to have on Army's schedule. I know there's a ton of respect from army about the way Syracuse plays and how they've built their program and especially over the past couple of years you know how they've rebuilt and I think it's going to be at least for the army fans as well a chance for them to get in their cars drive up a few hours and and enjoy the game at Syracuse. Now just today there was some big news obviously with army they reached an extension with your head coach Jeff Monken. Um, what is your reaction to that? What is your takeaway from that extension? I don't think there's any better coach and team fit in college football than Jeff Monk in an army. And I don't say that idly. I, I just really think, you know, the way he is in terms of how organized, how regimented he is with the type of players he gets in army, his willingness to just do anything and just do whatever it takes fits very well with the cadets and the cadet athletes. And uh, the type of football that he runs, whether it be the triple option that he was with Paul Johnson doing going back what 20 25 years to how he's evolved the offense really and what's now the gun option running a lot of the option principles out of the shotgun i think it's great news for everyone associated with army football all army football fans and as i like to say and i'll tell them again on our coaches show this week you know there's no better fit for a coach and a team than jeff munkin at west point well that's great to hear i'm glad they got the deal done today now a little bit um of other um you know, some thoughts around Army with all of the conference uh, realignment recently. There's been some talk about Army moving over to the American Conference. Your thoughts on that, if you think it'll happen? You know, I, the way I look at it is Army football will be in a good place no matter what the decision is, right? right. Independent football has been very good for Army since 2005. Of course, there were some struggles, but Army was able to build its program get to the point where it's going to bowl somewhat regularly competitive and beating Air Force and Navy, winning Commander-in-Chief's trophies. And then there's the other look at it where with the ever-changing landscape in college football, you might need to have a seat in one of these conferences in order to have a legitimate chance if you win your conference to make a playoff or even with scheduling, right? Because when you're an independent, you're scheduling all 12 games or at least 10 of the 12 games when you take away air force and navy where when you're in a conference that scheduling you know good and bad is going to be made for you so with the ever-changing landscape i personally i'll give you my opinion think that everyone's going to need to have a seat somewhere at some point whether it's that point now for army if it is i think it would be great and if it's not i think the independence has been very good for army and they could still function in that way. 
Gotcha. That that does make a lot of sense. Now, moving back over to the Syracuse game this week, head coach Dino Baber said in his press conference this morning, um, he was asked about facing Army in week four, and he said, you know, these guys are different. These are gentlemen. They're going to be officers when they graduate. What is your takeaway on that? Do you feel like that's necessarily true, that the guys on the Army football team are kind of held to a different standard and are those sort of gentlemen that Dino was referring to? Well, look, you know, I think I think it's special to be a student athlete anywhere, right? What you have to go through, the time management, what you're able to do. I, I will say that, you know, I, I like to say, and, and I believe it, that the Army players, I mean, these are the best of the best, right? These are, right. you know, cadets who come to college with a thought of, you know, serving their country, right? I have 10-year-old twin sons, and I bring them up to practice. They'll, they'll come up to practices and everything, and I and I'm so proud that they get to become friends with and and interact with people who, to me, are role models. But that's not to say that there aren't role models at every school, because I believe it's special to be any student athlete. However, they're called to serve and what they want to do, bigger picture than playing football, than being a college student, and what they're willing to sacrifice, whether it be, you know, you go to people think college, right? You know, social lives, doing all those things. It's a lot different at West Point. And I have just enormous amounts of respect uh, for what they do and and what they're going to do, what they're training to do. So again, I think absolutely gentlemen, that's 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 an amazing compliment coming from Coach Babers. Uh, but I do think they're just cut differently. And and to me, as I like to say, you know, they're the best of the best. That makes a lot of sense. That goes right along with what he was saying. Last question for you, your keys to the game for Army, if they're going to pull this one out against Syracuse. It's interesting. After the win at UTSA on Friday night, head coach Jeff Trailer of the Roadrunner said that Army played a perfect game. And, you know, that's obviously a general statement. But when you look at it, Army controlled the clock, right? Two long drives in the first quarter, which really took a lot of the air out of that game, took a lot of air out of the crowd in the Alamo Dome, right? And then caused the turnover in that drive that was sandwiched between the two offensive drives. Army needs long drives out of this gun option offense, especially with the way Syracuse likes to move the ball. And I follow Dino Babers, tons of respect for what he's done going back to Bowling Green and all his other spots. You know, Syracuse has looked at what they did against Purdue, right? They're going to want to move the ball. They have a quarterback who can do a lot of things. Keep him off the field, long drives. Then like anything else, we talk about UTSA and how good of a team they were, a conference champion one year ago. UTSA now has gone three games without forcing a turnover, right? And we know how important turnovers are in games. Army's going to have to force a couple. If you're going to win a game on the road against the team you're an underdog against, you have to win the turnover battle. Long drives, not asking the Army defense to completely stop Syracuse, but if you can force a couple of timely turnovers, win that turnover battle, you got a real shot if you're the Black Knights. Well, we'll see how it plays out this weekend at the JMA Wireless Dome. Rich DeMarco, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate having you. Thanks so much, Ashley. And should be a great game on Saturday. Good interview there with Rich. And and there is a point and an emphasis on this being Military Appreciation Weekend for Syracuse. There is. Dino Baber has talked about it in his press conference on Monday that, you know, these are different type of gentlemen, as he called them. Mm. Uh, a different, different type of weight, you know, when you face a team like this. But I thought it was interesting, uh, Rich dropped in in that interview, that, you know, this is a little bit of an in-state rivalry, even though West Point feels like it's pretty far away. There's going to be some Army fans in the Dome this weekend. Yeah, I think we'll see some colors of gold and black in there for sure. What are you even thinking about heading into Army? It might not be. I don't care what like Army us. does. They run, throw, <laughs> special teams. Listen, we, we have to worry about ourselves, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's getting better. Um, penalties, you know, stuff like that. Syracuse has to worry about. They won the penalty battle. It was, I, mean, I think, I 11 mean. to 9. <laughs> I mean, they had over 100 yards of penalties, okay? <laughs> so, they, crazy, they, I mean, they, you, got, you have to fix those type of problems with teams like this. Uh, because as you get into your tough, tougher schedule, mm -hmm. you cannot be giving yards away. But yeah. Army, Army is always going to give you a couple trick plays, and they're going to be tough. They're going to be tough. That's you know talking about toughness. That's not you know, we don't need to talk about that. They're going to be very tough. Um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> picking the right plays, yeah, <laughs> and execute on the right plays. Now that's going to be a different story. Executing. But they're going to try. They're going to have a couple tr uh, trick plays, like I said. Executing, you know, going to be a little shaky. But, again, you know, they're going to try to run the ball. I think they're going to try to run the ball down, down our throat. And we're going to just uh, spit it back at them. I think it's going to be – I think it's actually a great matchup for the Syracuse defense. Because if you look through the first three games, 
The rushing has been almost non-existent from these teams. Purdue had a little bit of success in the red zone, but if you saw the way that they were actually able to get down the field there in the second half was by passing the ball. The run defense is is solid. And let's before I forget, offense right now, fifth overall in the nation in terms of yards as well as points per game coming in, I believe right around 49 defensively fourth in the nation allowing just nine points per game and the success has more so been in the air are you are you more so looking forward to seeing how this defense does against an army offense or syracuse offense going against this army defense what do you want to say i think i saw the statistic yesterday and i think i mentioned it in one of our shows that this is a good matchup for syracuse like you mentioned because the syracuse run defense this season has been again like you said they haven't experienced a whole ton of it but they've been holding new opponents to less than i think it was 90 yards rushing averaging per mm-hmm. game which is that's great and if they can do that again against army they should be okay uh, again we you know when you're saying about um i i would <laughs> It's tough to say what yeah. I what we want to see because I mean they're playing good in all phases. Obviously, we missed a field goal last week. Um, One shanked punt, yeah, which well, I think is it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think yeah. It was oh, a we, couple oh. shanked punts. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Let, let's get the, uh, like I said, we, we want to talk about Army, <laughs> but we got to fix our own problems in our own house before we worry about Army. <laughs> yeah, special teams, special teams, the punting. I'm glad you brought. Thank you for bringing that up. You're welcome. Two, I mean, the one punt went to 20 yards shanked, and another mm-hmm. punt. Then a penalty on top of that as well, that got him into you – know, did they score off of that? They probably did because if you look at, I believe, the the three scores that Purdue did have, I believe they had amazing field position on two yes, of them. Yes, yes. Um, and so really you look at that defense and say, okay, they were kind of putting a pickle on a few of those. But, no, you're right. It, it's something that needs to be addressed. But, I'm again, I'm, I'm confident that these guys know how to do it. I think it was just maybe a different atmosphere – whatever you call it, because Stonehouse did go out there. I believe his last punt went for 40 yards. So it's like, okay, it's yeah. there. Yeah. Just got to be consistent. But, I mean, we can't take two we, – we can't practice on two punts. That's why you have practicing before the Very game true. and all that type of stuff. Very uh, true. There was no – you know, I didn't think there was no problems with the, the snap or anything like that. It was just pure with the punting. You yeah. Know, the punter, it's on him. Um, but – I'm really, I'm really excited to see how the offense keeps keeps getting building. They're, mm-hmm. they're they're keep building every week. They're getting better, and that's why I really enjoy watching Syracuse. And you know, again, before you know, with Syracuse, uh, they've only had seven uh, points scored on them so far before the before the uh, Purdue game. Um, we know teams are going to score against us, but are we going to be able to stop them and slow them down and make the big plays we need to make them? And we're doing that so far, so that's always a positive sign. Um, I'm just excited for the whole game. Like, yeah. honestly, I can't really pinpoint just offense or defense. I mean, everyone's playing very well. Like, I would like to see people catch the ball a little bit more. Uh, Schrader getting down a little bit faster, not taking the ne- unnecessary hits that he has to take. Uh, the running backs playing at a high level. Um, kicking game needs to be worked on a little bit. You know, they'll practice that over over this week. Uh, but besides that, I mean, the coaches are coaching very well. Uh, and it looks like the players are having fun out there. You know what I mean? Even when there's some, some type of adversity out there, they're responding back. Even off the penalties and everything, they're responding back. And, uh, you know, th- with some of the uh, personal foul penalties, that's just nonsense. That's bogus. Um, as you notice, the guy, uh, the gentleman from Syracuse that had the two personal fouls on the quarterback, the third time when he's about to hit the quarterback, <laughs> he stopped. Why couldn't you have done that the first two times? But hopefully now he's learned his lesson, the defensive tackle, um, that next time he won't Darn. get you know yeah. uh, two personal fouls for you know hitting a quarterback low, and they're doing, they they're doing the same thing against us. But again, we're not worried about them. We're worried about what we do in our house. We got to fix our problems first. It did feel like the D lines on both sides had this. They were playing with this sense of caution. And yes. Syracuse's D line and and you know really didn't too much put too much pressure on. Produce quarterback cuts and card. The times that they were forcing the ball out of his hands is when a linebacker was coming on a on a blitz package, and that was where we saw Purdue come down the field. Was it was just the D line? They just seemed to gas, and maybe that's just a full credit to Purdue's offensive line. As for Syracuse's offensive line, I was impressed with the way they played, yeah. especially yeah. because it's still we have not seen the same five in all three games. Yeah, and I asked Daniel Babers, I'm like, what do you think's going on with uh, you know that that quick meshing? And he's like, I wouldn't use the word mesh yet. He's like, they're not there there yet he's like you got to really be playing together to really be meshing and kind of have that communication of understanding the roles that guys are supposed to be in but Chris Bleich receiving ACC honors player of the week for offensive line Garrett Schrader obviously quarterback and Loquen Allen running back but Mark Petrie came in there it was his first game at the O-line I was just I was I'm 
I was impressed. I thought that would be a major concern in the Purdue game is if Schrader had no time in the pocket. You know what? They gave it to him. So game prediction-wise, anyone have anything off the top of their head? Or anyone ready to rip it right now? 14 points spread, 13 and a half, 14 points. That's what I'm seeing right now. I, I'm going to say uh, 40. I'm going to be in the 40 range. Uh, I'm thinking about 45-10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had, a, I had a very similar, somewhere in the 40s, I think, maybe like a, even like a 49-10, 49-13. I think, you know, Army's going to score. They're not going to shut them down like they did the first two weeks, but I, I don't think it'll be a stressor of a game. Let's just put it that way. I think it's not a team to overlook, and I think with the way a team like Army plays, it's the type of game where if you're, you know, maybe watching one game and the broadcast brings in a hey, let's take you over to Army against Oklahoma. It's a tight one right now. That different style of play does seem like it can just throw teams off a little bit from you know that routine of whether it's the game speed or whatnot. I think that could happen, but from what we've seen so far, again, it's one of those situations where it's like, until they prove otherwise, I have no reason but to say that they're going to score points. This Army team, def- defensively, they've allowed points. Syracuse is on the higher yeah. end of college football right now. I have no reason to think that they won't be in the 40s. So I'm going to stick right in there with you guys. And I'm going to go, let's see here, probably a field goal in there. 45 feels right, but I can't do that. <laughs> I can't go with James. But I could go 48 because there could be two field goals in there. I think I think it's going to be something like 48-14, 48-13. That feels right. I mean – Every single game that Syracuse is playing, they have gotten better. And that's what you want to see with a football team. And um, there's nothing really broken. It's just fine-tuning things. Okay? so it's You're just, in a good situation if yeah. you're in yes. the fine-tuning part. You're, you're, exactly. Yeah. Right? It's, nothing's broken. It's just fine-tuning things. And uh, I, I really believe the, the kids are believing in, in the babe, uh, Dino Babers and the coaching staff, listening to them. And they're proving it by showing and putting the points on the board. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, you know, we're going to be 4-0, hopefully. And I don't see why we're not going to be 4-0. Um, but, you know, give, give the the coaches and the players credit because they're actually playing very good. And the city, the fans, alumni, we got all be excited about. People are buying in. Ashley, last thoughts before we get into some trivia. Uh, last thought, I do think that this is the last week, James, you mentioned fine-tuning. This is kind of the last week for them to fine-tune some things in terms of, of course, your offense gets better every week and you make adjustments and whatnot, but I think they really get into that gauntlet in week five, as we know, with Clemson and then all of those ACC opponents coming up in October. And I think this is really the last week for them to try to run some new offensive schemes, get those receivers into a situation where they're more comfortable catching the ball and things like that. So hopefully they can do it. Hopefully it's not just the uh, Schrader show again. Again, a few of those become catches, and I don't think he's forced to be in a lot of those situations where he was running the ball. So let's clean it up. Let's get some catches, and hopefully we see a game going into the 40s because I absolutely could and see And let's that. stay healthy. That's the yeah. big stay thing. Healthy. Stay, stay healthy. healthy. Stay because, healthy. Because we really it think starts about with this QB. Too. We think about this as well. We're really excited and happy right now. Yeah. God forbid he goes down. We are not excited. It's a whole different story. Happy. Wholly different story. I, Wholly different story. I said yesterday, sorry not to interrupt you, but if I hear the name Carlos Del Rio Wilson, nothing against him. Wonderful. But I don't want to hear his name. <laughs> Unless it's like a blowout and he comes in just to get yeah. some snaps. And, yeah. you know, hopefully, and hopefully he can get in there. Hopefully he can get him in there because, again, like, like we said, it's no, it's no different with quarterback, offensive linemen. Okay? Mm-hmm. You have to prepare and you have to be ready. So, I mean – People go down all the time. You don't know who it's going to be. And obviously, we're riding Schrader very, very hard. And he's, you know, 95% of our offense. Um, you know, we got to keep him safe. And he has to stay safe. And, you know, as we're saying yeah. that, but he has to be the ultimate, make the decisions of stepping out of bounds, getting down, and now take those hits. It's not, it's not hard. Schrader, if you're listening, please listen. I'm 45 <laughs> years old. My neck, my back, <laughs> my shoulder's hurting right now, okay? Don't take those hits, buddy. Starts and end with QB1. We saw the 6-0 season last year. He ends up getting banged up, and things weren't so pretty on the back half. But Hodges, trivia time. Then we'll go over our poll question from last week. Absolutely. First, a message for one Rachel Culver. Okay. Shout out, Rachel. I don't talk behind people's backs on mm-hmm. podcast episodes. Got it. My cuts are great. Well, she said your cuts weren't as 
weren't as fine tuned as hers. If you remember well, that from that last week, that she's not paying attention to the conversation, which is the whole point of the producer role. Um, also, <laughs> Purdue fans appreciate you watching our video last week. Fantastic. Um, however, don't come at me about my questions. Anyway, um, this week we're focused on James Munro's favorite part of the game, the run game. Okay. okay. Army football has been a top five rushing team each of the last seven seasons. Syracuse has not been. They obviously haven't been a top five rushing team in the past 20 or so seasons, but they have been in the top 25. When okay. was the last time the Orange had a top 25 rushing offense? You said it hasn't been within the last seven years? 20 years, you said. They haven't been in the top five. Top five. So the question is, when's the last time they were in the top Let's 25? Let's be real. If there, is a, there is no doubt that any service academy is going to be in the top five in rushing, whether it's Air Force, Navy, Army. Like they, They're always pretty much perennial top five rushing because right. that's how they play. Other teams, that just it changes based upon the year. Syracuse hasn't been in the top 25, at least in the past 20 years. That's as far back as I went. Top five or top 25? Sorry, top five. Okay. They have not been a top five rushing team. They have been a top 25 rushing team. When was the last time they were? Okay. And this is at the end of a season. I have an answer. I'm going to hold it. Let, it, let it marinate. He loves suspense. Listen, trivia is not my uh, strong point here. Uh, it's all right. You guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's not James either. <laughs> I'm 22 years old. I don't have a lot of uh, years what, what, behind what me. What you <laughs> <laughs> Not to call you old. Wow. Oh, no, that wow. was not a dig. Hmm. That was I a total dig. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think it was more Ashley saying <laughs> the trivia-wise is her reading about it, not necessarily Correct. living it. Yeah, I didn't live much of any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have an answer that I'm that I'm pretty locked in on. Okay. You guys want it? I have you in a single box, Tommy. Fire away. The last time they had a top twelve, top twenty, top twelve, <laughs> top twenty-five <laughs> rushing offense. Twenty twenty-one. Sean Tucker had his peak All-American year. Garrett Schrader also new to this team, and the RPO got them through that whole season. Ended up finishing five and seven, but nonetheless, it was a running team. Would anybody else like to put an answer in? He said twenty years ago. Comedy. No, he said top five hasn't been in the last twenty. He said where well, he's asked about he's asked about top twenty-five. He's making this very confusing. This you is know, on him. Know, maybe maybe we need to find him. Two. James, James. The question is. <laughs> When was the last time Syracuse had a top 25 rushing offense? Uh, I was going to say, uh, that's funny you say that, because I was going to say 2001. 2001? 2003. I mean, because you were senior 01, right? 2002. Yeah. You were going 2002, I thought. 2003. I'm talking about Walter. <laughs> okay, Walter. I was going to say, it was definitely like you, Walter. Uh, I'll say Walter. I'll um, say 03. Just throw it out there. Okay, so we got 03 in 2021 and 2021. Hit us with it. I will say, Syracuse was a top 25 rushing offense, I believe, in 2004 was one of the years. Okay. Before. So, close. James is close in regards to that. He is not close enough, however, because the last time Syracuse was a top 25 rushing offense, they were number 21, 207.8 yards per game 1998. in 2021. There you oh. go. You sneaky, sneaky devil. Yeah, was, uh, Where, so, what was, what was 2004? I, they were 24. 24? How about they, James's senior year? I, I Would your senior year be the highest or your junior year? Junior year, probably. Yeah. They weren't top 25. It, I, I, the record only goes back to, in terms of the database I was using, 2003, 2004. I have a, I have a program for you, by the way. Okay. I found either your junior or senior media program, which I don't <laughs> know if you have, so I'm going to get that to you. I'm going to find some old tape. We're going to do We're gonna do a – you know what we're going to do? What? I'm thinking I'm planning this for the off season or like leading into the bowl game. I think we're going to bring in a laptop, kind of have it full screen for the people viewing on YouTube. But I'm going to try to find some old tape of James from <laughs> Syracuse, and we're going to break down his well, tape. It's funny you we're going to critique because it. Because when Moten first came on New the podcast, segment. we had old video of him playing. Yeah. That oh, we, we, we used we'll to have, introduce it. We'll have Moten, too. I mean, we'll have Mungro. Plenty of Mungro, too. <laughs> New segment. New segment. It'll be oldies but goodies. critiquing me. <laughs> oldies but goodies. <laughs> Can we stop digging on James's age right now? The man's only forty-five. A lot of digs about it. Ashley did start I it. I did. I did. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, 
You were born, I think, his senior year of college. I, was I mean, born are you serious? In October. I mean, no, that was, <laughs> I mean, that was 2000, everyone. I mean, it was just, it I was mad at the top of my head. going to be watching this now. You're just going to just <laughs> dog me like this now. It's mad at the top of my head. <laughs> anyway, uh, poll question. Last week, we asked everyone which unit impressed you more in SU's win over Western Michigan. 56 of you sa- uh, said the defense, which I, as I thought kind of where the poll would land because it was very 50 50. This week, we're focused on Garrett Schrader and the style he plays with. The question, Garrett Schrader should run, dot, 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 more or less. I hope this one is a little bit more spread out than the 56%. The question is up on Twitter at CMI Central and Instagram at the Orange Zone Podcast. We'll reveal the results on next week's episode. I'll probably start putting this out a little bit earlier so it can be more of a week of thing. Um, So game pick wise, yeah, we're all doing pretty darn good against the spread and we're all undefeated right now. So good stuff. Final thoughts before we're out of here. Yeah. If Schrader keeps performing the way he's performing, would rushing the ball. Mm Mm-hmm. And keep that high level up and playing wise, you know what's next. I mean, why not? Okay, I mean, Heisman. Okay, I was oh, about I've to, seen I was that. Heisman. I was about I to do the, the word stance. And jinxed it. I know Heisman. he did say the word. Why? why? Would you say the word. Listen, it's nothing about jinxing. If you feel, if you're good, you're good. James, if you're bad, you're bad. You've heard of the no hitter theory, right? No, I, 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 you don't, I don't say that a no hitter is happening until listen, like six outs away. Listen, yeah. you know listen, how many listen. times? You know how many times? Sanders over at Colorado has had the the hard H dropped about him so far this season. Shador Sanders. It's just when you got to talk about it, you got to yeah, talk and about he's it. He's probably not going to win it. He's well, probably going to be like Michael Pettix. Why? Because no one's talking about Michael. I don't even know who Michael Pettix is. He's in yeah. Washington. He's the, arguably the best, second best quarterback behind Caleb Williams in the Pac 12. Hmm. Well, well, we'll find out. Let's see what Schrader gets to do this yeah. week. Then. Yeah, if okay. Schrader leads them though to like a crazy nine and three type season, I mean, I feel like it's a conversation. If Schra- if I think if I think if they go to Clemson two weeks from now, we can start talking about that. Okay, that's fair. I would say for him to be, if you want to be like dead serious with this, for him to be an actual candidate towards the end of the season, this team has to be in a New Year's Six Bowl. I agree. I think that yeah. I think that I think that's realist. But you know what? I think that's realistic. Just, put, just do what he's doing: win games and put numbers up. One game at I a rather, time. I want the win first, then numbers come second. There we go. All right, we're out of here. The Orange Zone Podcast. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. For James Munger, Ashley Wenskowski, Brendan Hodges, <sighs> and Tommy Sladek, <laughs> Darth Vader in the back over there. We're out of here. See you next week. Peace.